ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره نعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise and glory belongs to Allah Almighty the exalted and glorified we thank him we seek his aid and his support we seek his forgiveness we seek guidance from him we seek his protection from the evil whispers of our inner selves and our and the evil consequences of our actions that result from that for whomever Allah azza wa jal protects and guides no one can harm and no one can lead astray and whomever Allah leads astray without guidance none can rescue them and none can bring them back to the path and we testify there is no one worthy of worship but Allah alone and no one worthy of our absolute obedience and love but Allah alone and no one worthy of our surrender and our devotion with Allah alone without any partners the supreme king and guardian of the heavens and the earth and everything in them and everything between them and everything we know and everything we don't and we bear witness that his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the seal of the prophets and his final messenger and no one is worthy of following like him and there is no better example than his example sallallahu alaihi wasallam O people of Iman, fear your Lord, be dutiful to your Lord, be conscious of Allah, your Lord and Master, your caretaker and provider, your legislator and your reckoner, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not meet your Lord, do not move on past this life except in that state of complete and total surrender to Allah, a state of Islam. To begin, after welcoming my brothers and sisters to the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, I would request from you to entertain a question in your head for a moment. If you were to see a person buy a brand new car, latest model, and place it in his garage, and wash it every single day and polish it and armor all the tires, and then he would bring out his wardrobe and stick them inside that car and do nothing else with it each day, use it as his closet, what would you think of this person? Or a person that has the latest model, most impressive refrigerator delivered to his home so that he can use it as nothing more than a shelf for his cereal on top and that's it. Or a person that purchases the most expensive pen on the market, be it Parker or otherwise, a pen that costs hundreds of dollars, so that with it he can knock on doors and play with his ears. You would say this person clearly needs to be admitted into an institution. This clearly is a person that is unstable. This person is either joking or he's out of his mind. Or he needs attention but he's not normal. And this is an example that if you were to give time to extend it to many of the things in our lives, we will realize that we many a times miss the mark, do very foolish things, and of the greatest reasons why the human beings become misled and do foolish acts in their lives, in their dunya and their deed, every aspect of their life, is because they don't understand the true value of things. And an example of that that I wish to use for today's football is about what we are doing now in football, or about Friday in general. Many of us don't know the potential and the opportunity and what can be taken from this day and thus we miss out on much of what exists in this day's Jum'ah. In Sahih Muslim, Abu Hurairah narrated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُ يَوْمٍ طَلُعَتْ فِيهِ الشَّمْسِ يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ 
the best day the sun has ever risen upon is Friday. فِيهِ خُلِقَ آدَمٍ In this day, Adam was created. Friday. وَفِيهِ يُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ And in it, he was created, admitted into paradise. وَفِيهِ يُخْرِجَ مِنْهَا And in it, he was expelled from it. In another narration outside of Sahih Muslim, وَفِيهِ تِيبَ عَلَيْهِ And that day is the day that Allah accepted his repentance. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَلَا تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ إِلَّا فِي يَوْمِ جُمْعَةِ And the hour will not be established. The last day will not take place except on a Friday. In another narration reported by Ahmed and perhaps others, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and there is no creature except that they are horrified on Friday, save for the two species, the humans and the jinn. Because they know what this day holds. The potential of this day, they value it on certain levels more than the human beings. So what is so special about this day, if we were to reflect, and we will inshallah on this khutbah now, on all that was taught to us, about how we're supposed to behave on a Friday, you'll get the message inshaAllah. You'll realize what this day is all about. See, this was the day of creation. And this is the day when we will be returned to our final destination. So this is the beginning and the end. This is what it all comes down to. And this is the day that you need to remember where you came from and where you're going. And how what happens in the middle is just details. Begin the day from the onset. Our Prophet ﷺ taught us that on Friday you begin your day in Salatul Fajr by reciting, this is the Sunnah, Surah Al-Sajdah in the first rak'ah and Surah Al-Insan in the second rak'ah. This was almost always done by the Prophet ﷺ. Think for a minute, why these two surahs on Friday if you reflect a bit, you will realize that they have the two reminders in them. They both speak about those two concepts, the beginning of creation and the final destination. In Surah Al-Sajdah, you stand there, you're supposed to stand there in the first rak'ah, and here, right there on the first page, Allah Azza wa Jal introducing Himself to the world. How? As this most perfect creator, this most able master, this most powerful caretaker of the world. Al-Aziz Al-Rahim, the mighty, the merciful. Al-Ladhi ahsana kulla shayin khalaqahu wa bada'a khalqa l-insani min teen. The one who perfected everything he created and he began the creation of the human being from clay, from sand and water, from a muddy substance, from mud. ثُمَّ جَعَلَ نَسْلَهُ فِي سُلَالَةٍ مِّن مَّاءٍ مَّهِينٍ And then he made the offspring, the descendants of this first creation made from mud, which is Adam, descendants, generations, from a chain that begins with a measly liquid, a despicable fluid, this semen that comes out of the man. ثُمَّ سَوَّاهُ وَنَفَخَ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِهِ then this creation that he began after he made it from mud and destined that it would come out of a liquid thereafter, he fashioned it perfectly and blew into it from his soul. And then he made for you hearing and sights and hearts how few it is those that thank. And you say that once we fall apart in the earth, once we wither away, we're not going to be recreated. The verse continues to say. So a person hears that, that helps him go out in the world that morning with a reminder that we all came from mud. So no one is to be boasting over anyone else. And we all came from the same person. So we're supposed to be compassionate with each other when if you travel back far enough, you will realize you have a direct sibling relationship with every nationality you may see on that day. And then you walk through that day reminded that Allah created you from mud, that dry, cold mud. He made a warm-blooded creature that cries and laughs 
and walks and talks and eats and argues, so you recognize Allah and His greatness. And then you look at every face and you realize no one's face is blue and no one's face is purple. Because the hadith mentioned when Allah took from the mud of the earth, He took from uh, each of it a bit. So you have all the shades of the human race, the human skin. Each and every one of them has a representation in the form of dirt outside. That reminder does wonders if a person were to remember. And then you move on in the surah, it fast forwards to the final destination. When he said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ لَا كِسُوا رُؤُوسِهِمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ رَبَّنَا أَبْصَرْنَا وَسَمِعْنَا فَرْجِعْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا إِنَّا مُقِنُونَ And if you could only see them, Allah says, they have judgment now. Also on a Friday, this is when you must remember more than any, or refresh your memory as they say. And if you could only see those criminals as they stand there, when brought to their final destination, lowering their heads in front of their Lord, saying, Oh, our Lord, we have heard and we have seen. He gave you hearing and sight in the beginning. You should have heard and seen in the beginning. We have heard and we have seen. So what do you want? So send us back to do righteousness because now we are certain. But certainty does not benefit on that day. Certainty benefits from those that heeded the reminder earlier and took the knowledge of revelation earlier and reflected on it and gained certainty before they arrived. We are certain. Of course you're certain. It's too late. The unseen is gone. The believer is the one that believes while it's still the unseen, before the curtains get lifted, before you realize this life wasn't all we thought it out to be or insisted on assuming that it was. And then you make a fool and sujood and you speak to Allah and you complain to Him and you thank Him and you ask of Him and then you stand for the second raka'ah in Fajr and you recite Surah Al-Insan and you find the same theme, theme be built, pushed into you, carved into your personality. Surah Al-Insan begins how هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينُ مِنَ الدَّهْنِ لَمْ يَكُمْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا Hasn't there come over the human being a, a time when he was something that was never mentioned? Wasn't there a time when humans didn't even exist and they were brought into existence without requesting? Allah did a favor to us and brought us in here because He wants to have mercy on us. And all we need to do is an exerted effort to qualify for that mercy. Hasn't a time come when the human being was something never mentioned? And then He was mentioned. He was created on a Friday. Right? Then Allah says, إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ نُطُفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا Indeed, we created the human being from a drop of mixed fluid. We put him there on a Friday. And then we continue to allow for him to exist through this mixed fluid, the sperm of the man that goes into the egg. And they come together. فَجَعَلْنَاهُ And so we made him hearing, so that we may test him. And that is why we made him one that can hear and can see. Notice the themes overlapping and reinforcing one another, this concurrence, so that you internalize these concepts. And then Allah says later on in the surah about the destination, for example, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ And if only you could see there. That's the believer's job, is to believe in it before he could see it. To believe it because Allah said it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most truthful of speakers. He's fast forwarding for you because you need to send your belief forward to the hereafter. Before you arrive, your heart has to beat you there. And if only you could see there, meaning in paradise. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا If only you could see in there, you would see such bliss, unimaginable enjoyment. So delightful that Allah hid it from your imagination. Imagine the most powerful imagination ever given to a human being. Imagine what the movie directors are able to imagine. They are quite talented. You say, man, how in the world did he think of that? What exists of bliss in the hereafter is permanent and it is whatever has never dawned on an imagination of a human being of bliss that Allah chooses for them. So if anybody has ever thought of it, it's not there. It's better than that. If it simply dawns on a person's mind, it's automatically disqualified. رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا You will see such bliss. 
وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا And a great dominion. And a great dominion. In another recitation, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught, وَمَلِكًا كَبِيرًا And a great king. You will see in there, not just bliss, but the one who created that bliss himself. You get reunited with your maker, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then a person walks out of that fajr after those two surahs, he's supposed to not be faced by the world anymore. Not think he's simply some flesh and bones and he's just some physical, material being. No, his spirit becomes alive. And then you're supposed to also remember on this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala privileged you of not just being the human being that can qualify for this gift in the hereafter, that Allah privileged you of being a human being and a person that can be eligible for paradise forever, but you are also from, on top of that, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're supposed to remember that on Friday. Because he taught us that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Hajj of Abu Bakr al Bukhari, he said, نَحْنُ الْآخِرُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ We are the last, meaning to show up, to arrive, chronology of human history. Right? The human race begins with Adam, we are the last of them. We are the last. But the first on the Day of Judgment will be given precedence. We get judged first and move on first. And we are the first to be admitted into paradise. Even when everybody moves on, we're there at the gates of paradise, this ummah enters first behind, it, behind, the, behind the final Prophet And then he explains how, he says, بَيْدَ أَنَّهُمْ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا وَأُوتِيْنَاهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ Because we re- they received the books before us, and we received it after them. So we came last, but we're going to get pushed up to first. We're going to get an upgrade, a privilege. You must remember that on a Friday. Because you're part of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he said to conclude the hadith, فَهَذَا يَوْمُهُمُ الَّذِي اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ This year, Friday, is their day which they disputed over. This was the sacred day they disputed over. فَهَذَا يَوْمُهُمُ الَّذِي اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ قَدْ هَدَاكُمُ اللَّهُ لَا This is the day they disputed regarding and Allah guided you to it. Allah left it for the final ummah. Destined that we are the ones that recognize the value of this day. We have to recognize it. So much is here. This is like the reserve tank for the believer and for the believer of this ummah especially. He says, this is the day they disputed over. Allah has guided you to it. فَالْيَوْمُ لَنَا وَغَدًا لِلْيَهُودِ وَبَعْدَ غَدًا لِلْنَصَارِ So this is our day. And tomorrow became the day of the Jews and the day after is the day of the Christians. And that's why of of what you're supposed to fill your day with on Friday is sending salah and salam upon the Prophet Why? Why on Friday especially? There is an increased emphasis that you say, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina. Fill your day with that. Why? Because Friday is the day you're supposed to remember who you belong to. That ummah that you were privileged of being born into or kept or entering into, embracing, if you embrace it consciously as an adult, if you convert it into this religion, on Friday you send salah and salam upon the Prophet And then you fill this day with ibadah, with remembering, with remembrance to remember your purpose. It's interesting that the Prophet discouraged and disliked that a person singled out Friday for fasting. Why? All this is interconnected by the way. Why this, as some of the ulama say, because today is a day you're supposed to remember your purpose, where you came from, where you're going, your purpose in life. And so you, this day is to so be filled from beginning to end with acts of worship, to revive that heart of yours, to remind you. Isn't it interesting that when you do acts of worship, you become more conscious? Conscious is not knowledge. It's not an exercise of the brain. Why is it that when you worship more in Ramadan, you become more afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You're supposed to feel more secure. The reason is these acts of devotion wake up your heart more. And that's why we fill this day with ibadah. So that you'll have energy to do that. As some of the scholars say, this is the reason it was disliked, especially for someone that is not used to fasting, to single out Friday for fasting. He's not going to be able to use this day correctly. Fill it up with ibadah. And perhaps that is also the reason why Friday is the only day, 
And I'm going to move a bit into fiqh, but for a spiritual reason, a reason to remind you the greater concept here, the greater theme here, Friday is the only day it's not disliked to pray right before the Lord. There are times of the day when it's disliked to pray, like right after Fajr until the sun rises, and right before Dhuhr until the sun passes the middle point, the zenith in the sky, and right before Maghrib until the sun sets, unless you haven't prayed Asr, obviously. These times, it's disliked to pray in these times. Because even though you're praying to Allah, you are resembling those that pray to the sun. And you're supposed to differ from them even outwardly so it never trickles into inwardly. But on Friday, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that when you come to the masjid, you come early and you keep praying. This is the forgotten sunnah that needs to be revived. You keep praying until the Imam comes on the minbar, until the Imam stands here. And then he taught us وسلم, to recite Surah Al Kahf in a day filled with worship. This is a very special day. This is a day when you get rejuvenated. This is when your heart gets in dialysis. This is when you get reborn in your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than any other day. And then there's a hadith, and this hadith, believe it or not, is, it is authentic. And the reason I say believe it or not is because many times of the ways you can know that a hadith is made up, many times people, even with the right intention, they do a very wrong act of making up a hadith to encourage people to do good. And this is a disaster. Because if you would just stick to what the Prophet ﷺ taught, you would not do it all until the day you die. Even if you lived as long as Nuh you wouldn't be able to do all that he did. So there's no room, there's no time, there's no lifespan. But of the ways to know that a hadith is made up is when there's a huge reward for an act that is very small. Like some email or message that goes out, people spread it, and it's wrong to spread these things until you verify that whoever wants the reward of Noah and Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, let them say this thing on this night. Right? Automatically, you know there's something fishy here, right? Something's wrong here. That's how you know. This hadith I'm about to tell you, believe it or not, it is authentic. Though it almost resembles like it can't be. How can there be so much reward for this act? But I'll explain to you why in a minute with the hadith first, figure out the way to apply it. Even if once in your life, figure it out. The hadith is collected by Ahmed and confirmed authentic by many of the scholars of hadith from Aws ibn Aws ibn Taqafi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ غَسَّلَ يَوْمَ الْجُمُعَةِ وَفْتَسَلَ Whomever washes, meaning his head, on the day of Jumu'ah, and then washes himself, his body. وَبَكَّرَ وَبْتَكَرَ and he sets out early and he gets to the masjid early. Obviously before the imam begins the khutbah, but very early. I'll leave the fiqh out of it for a minute. And he walks to the masjid, it's probably the hardest part, and does not ride. For sure if you ride, because you have to ride, there is definitely a reward. A reward for every time your tire turns and every step you take from your parking spot into the masjid and from the car to the house, all of that. But this is a special one though. And he walks and does not ride. مِنَ imam, And he comes close to the Imam. And he sits there, listening, silent, doesn't speak. And he listens to the Imam with that focus and that concentration. Except that it's written for him the reward of an entire year. Fasting its days and praying its nights. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bi kulli khutwa, for every step he takes, he gets the reward of one year of praying at night and one year of fasting the days. Why? Why all this great reward? Because the point of Jumu'ah and all this that leads to Jumu'ah of the pinnacle points in Jumu'ah is the khutbah here now. Because that is when you are reminded. And without a reminder, your soul dries up and you die and you forget. You die spiritually and you forget where you came from and you forget where you're going. And then you become worthless the moment you did not realize what this day contains. And you know this in the reverse, the same way worship makes you more conscious, not worshiping, not being reminded, not devoting yourself for time, it turns your heart off and it buries your heart within you, your body becomes a coffin for that heart and you become finished, annihilated. 
As he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whomever misses three consecutive jumu'ahs, even though one by itself is a disaster, whomever misses three consecutive jumu'ahs, his heart gets stamped, it gets sealed. And then he becomes, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in al-ghafileen, from those that are negligent, those that can't remember anymore, those that begin to see things differently, begin to become unaware of the realities, of the values, of the creation and the destination, of it all. And that's why he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا يُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ All this is leading up to the salah. These rewards of walking in Surah Al-Kahf and praying here, and salah and salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of it. And then when the call is made, إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ Once the call is made for the khutbah to begin, مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ On Friday, the verse says, فَسْعَوْ إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُ الْبَيْعَ Then rush, hurry up, race to the remembrance of Allah and leave off all trade. If you don't, you're finished. Your life has no worth. And that's why many of the ulama say, any trade done in this hour is invalid. And any transaction, whether it's trade or otherwise, based on trade, based on that ayah, is also invalid. So a person sells something in the Jum'ah time, many of the transaction is invalid. If you got married during the Jum'ah time, that is invalid. Any transaction, according to some of the ulama, why? Because they saw such emphasis in the Quran and the Sunnah that you have to be here, but not just be here. You have to be here so that perhaps Hopefully, you can wake up a little bit from here. And this is where you run back to. This is the base where you regroup. You gather yourself again and try to go out to the world for another week without being devoured by it. So that the dunya doesn't infiltrate your heart. It's fine that you interact with it. It's fine that you be a human being. But you are a spirit before that you are a human body. And maybe we come to that in the end of the khutbah of time permits. But you have to. Imagine that the Prophet ﷺ said, even if you get here, and you listen to the khutbah, مَنْ لَعِبَ بِالْحَصَى فَقَدْ لَغَى Whomever plays with the pebbles. Imagine the masjid a long time ago, it was no carpets. It was rocks, stones, sand, and pebbles. If you just play with the pebbles. So today we can say play with your toes. Play with your cell phone. Whomever plays with the pebbles, then he has forfeited. Meaning what? Forfeit the reward of his jum'ah. He doesn't have to pray though. He's offered his jum'ah as a prayer. But he didn't get the most important thing out of the prayer, out of the khutbah, and that is the reminder. And that's why he called it, and when the call is made to the reminder, or to Jumu'ah, then rush to the dhikr of Allah, rush to that reminder. And he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, another hadith, imagine, just understand the, the, the bigger image here, the concept. وَمَنْ قَالَ لِيَخِيهِ أَمْصِتْ فَقَدْ لَغَلْ Whoever tells his brother, be silent, stop talking khutbah. Right? Obviously not for the Imam. Whoever is listening and is instructing someone else while the Imam is instructing, while he hears the khutbah especially, when if he can hear the Imam and he tells his brother, be silent, then he has forfeited. <coughs> I mean, he forfeited his reward. Think about what that means. The scholar said, if a person is speaking during Jum'ah, this is not allowed. And it is an obligation for you to command good and forbid evil. So it's supposed to be an obligation on you to tell him, be quiet. That's normal. But in this scenario, that obligation gets waived. Because the obligation of the hour, the greatest duty here now, is you need to quickly get your heart alive again, wake up, shock yourself. That's what the khutbah is for. And that's why Abu Hurairah, when he saw a woman, to add to these factors about Jumu'ah that many of us don't know, and we don't know the big picture behind them, he saw a woman walking past him, and he could smell from her a scent. She was perfumed. <laughs> he said, Oh, slave of the most powerful. He's using Allah's name that can get her to wake up. Where are you going? Where are you heading to? She said, The house of Allah. I'm going to the masjid. He said, If you're really going to the masjid, nobody goes to the masjid like this. If you're really going to the masjid, then know that I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that whoever, any woman that leaves her home perfumed, scented, Allah will not accept a prayer from her until she returns to her home and bathes. This is supposed to be a place where there is no distraction whatsoever, especially in Jumu'ah, even though it applies across the board. You know, consider the hadith 
of, of Abu Qatad and Abu Hurairah عنه, Sahih al-Bukhari. He said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمُ الْإِقَامَةِ فَمْشُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّكِينَةُ وَالْوَقَارِ وَلَا تُسْرِعُوا فَمَا أَدْرَكْتُ فَصَلُّوا وَمَا فَاتَكُمْ فَأَتِلُوا When you hear the iqam, the prayer is about to start, is any prayer. Then walk to the prayer while upon you is calmness, tranquility, respectability, and do not race. When I said race before, I mean do all you can, but without running. He says, but do not race. Walk in a respectable, calm fashion, and do not race. So it's haram to race, meaning to run to the salah. He says, and whatever you catch of the prayer, then pray it, meaning with the jama'ah. And whatever you miss, then after it completed. Why? Because even if you're there, once again, you got to the masjid, but you're hyperventilating from the running, and it's as if you're not there. <coughs> Unless this gives you a reminder, unless your heart is awake and present and arrives before your body, there's almost, almost no point in being here. That's what we get from all of this. And then after the Jumu'ah, we sit there. Many of the Salaf would say, no one speaks from Asr until Maghrib on a Jumu'ah except someone who's out of his mind, who's insane. Because this is when the Prophet said that this is the last hour of Jumu'ah, meaning before Maghrib, is a time when Allah will not hear a slave call without asking for anything sinful or anything that would divide between families, except that he hears his call, meaning he listens to his call and accepts it. So the day from the beginning to its end is worship. And of the pinnacles of that worship is to be reminded.
Even if it enters it, he's going to miss out on Allah. I mean, there could be a point where you miss out on some reward and a point where you miss out on it all. It becomes a disaster. How many Jumu'ahs have you prayed in your life? How many of them have transformed your life? And you not understanding the khutbah or a part of the khutbah or you not liking the khutbah or who is giving the khutbah cannot be an excuse. No one will carry your excuses for you on the Day of Judgment. Many times we sit there and Jumu'ah is our sleep time. Or sometimes we come and we're awake but we listen to the first few words before we sleep. We say, I know that hadith. It should scare you that you know that hadith. How many times have you heard it? You memorize it already from how many Jumu'ah you attended and it still hasn't changed anything in you. That should worry you. It should cause you to become uneasy and about to panic. Or when you sit there and you hear a profound reminder, because Allah said it, His Messenger said it, and you say, yes. And then you divert the conversation going on in your head. You say, this Imam, what are you talking about? Such a hypocrite. He never acts upon any of this. He has his own Friday interrogation. He has his own return to Allah. Right now, you need to worry about yourself at the moment. Don't allow anything to cause you to forget it. This is about you. If you understand a sentence from the khutbah, measure yourself and your life on it. That's what it's for. This is you grabbing onto that thing in the middle of the ocean while the waves are going. Hopefully you get back to the ship. Hopefully you come back to the boat. Because the boat will continue. Trying to get out of the storm. Allah Azza wa says, أَلَمْ يَأْتِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ إِلَّا سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى has the time not come? I mean, haven't you found the minute yet? Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consolidated it for you. It's not like Saturday for the Jews with a whole day they're not allowed to do anything, right? As a punishment for them. You have one hour or less than an hour to gather yourself calm and collected, focused and in control to try to get the sparks up again in your life. Doesn't it scare you that you allowed your week to become me, physical me, and that's all. That's it. Listen, you're more of a spirit, as we said, than you are a body. Because Allah created the souls before the bodies. And this body of yours, it is a gift from Allah, but it's a vehicle. You're going to leave it at one point and you're going to move on. Your spirit will continue. Doesn't it scare you that there's no end? As we say many times, Allah created you. You have a beginning, but that's it. There is no end. Don't think of death as the end. Death is that crossroads. You're going to go here forever or here forever. Forever. Jumu'ah should be a time when you fight yourself to remember that. These will not be my parents forever, only Allah knows. Or my kids forever, only Allah knows. Forever is in the hereafter. And anything compared to forever is nothing. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that benefit from this day and revive within ourselves the importance of this day and take from this day that which will help us safely journey towards Him and properly stand in front of Him. Allahumma ameen. May Allah bless this Friday for us and for the blessed Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was given this day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers on this Friday and accept our dua at the end of this day and make us conscious of the value of this day until the day we die. Allahumma ameen. May Allah make this day a day for us and not a day against us. A reminder for us and not an accusation against us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our families and our dunya and our deen and our hearts and our bodies and ourselves and the Muslims around us. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ghfir lana wa hamna. Allahumma ghfir lana wa hamna. Allahumma ghfir lana wa hamna. Allahumma ghfir lana hasnana wa jiddana wa khata'ana wa amdana wa kullu thalika indana. Allahumma aslih lana deenana al-lani huwa asmatu amina. وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل موت راحة لنا من كل شر وقنا لفتنا ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها زكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم اهدنا وسددنا اللهم اهدنا وسددنا اللهم اهدنا وسددنا سواء السبيل اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على عبدك ونبيك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين